Hello everybody, this is Manuel and welcome to another Eternal Top Decks. Today um, I'm going to talk about the latest version of Stone Scar Burn Queen, which now has been redubbed uh, Royal Burn by the community because the Queen sort of got her king in Vicious Highwaymen with the latest set. So, uh, hence the name change. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the current list. Here we go. Um, also, as you may have noted, I enlarged the webcam frame for the deck tech. Um, let me know in the comments how you guys like that. I thought it's a nice touch to just um, fill the empty space of the, sec of the third column of the deck and also uh, make it a bit easier to um, see my face, see my uh, facial expressions, and also just, yeah, kind of relate more to me and the video rather than just being like this small tiny image in the right hand corner that's barely visible and the voice talking. So it's a bit more, um, yeah, connected between the voice and the face. I thought it's it's a nice subtle improvement. All right, so the list hasn't changed a ton, really. This is a very, um, yeah, moderate, uh, traditional approach that I wanted to share with you uh, today. I'm working on some um, other um, versions of Stone Scar that are more towards the Stone Scar deck wins route that I have been uh, playing a lot in the past. But this is your um, fairly traditional um, medium-sized Stone Scar. And as we, as a lot of people call it these days, Royal Burn. Not the biggest fan of the name since the deck is not even a burn deck. It has like eight burn spells, which are mostly used as removal spells. Just sometimes finish off the opponent like every burn removal does. But it's not a burn deck in the actual sense. It's not trying to first and foremost aim its burn spells at the opponent's face and ignore their board. Quite the opposite actually. Okay, so the unit base, the best eight one drops as usual for Oni Ronin for Pyronite, the best two two drops for Instigator and for Outlaw. Not m uh, much options here in the in regard to new cards. For Champion and for Cinder Yeti as three drops. Then we have Four Bandit Queen and two Highwaymen as the four drops, no more Impending Doom. And then one Soulfire Drake just to top it off to give the deck a little punch. I'll explain that in a moment. Okay, so the one drops are just the best two one drops uh, in the game. The other one drops that you have to play after this just fall off drastically. Um, Knife Jack is nice against Varus Favor and opposing one attack uh, blockers and or even attackers and aggro mirrors, but it's basically a worse Oni Ronin because Oni Ronin's war cry makes it that much better and knife jack dealing two damage to you can sometimes also be relevant. And Pyronite just stays relevant throughout the game. Overwhelm makes it synergize well with Rapid Shot and so on and so forth. So yeah, um, they are both just way better than the other options. Uh, Granite and Drone is something a lot of people play, and I keep being unimpressed with. Um, the card just doesn't do enough, really. So I don't see the point in in playing uh, Granite and Drones here over any of the other cards. Um, Instigator is just your best two drop, basically, followed by Outlaw, which is almost as good. It's stalled out easier. But the quick draw lets it attack into some things that uh, Instigator can't, and the Warcry is just really powerful, stacking up uh, our later units to be impactful. Um, just a random note for people that are not aware: usually, if you have both, you almost always want to play Outlaw first to get the most out of the Warcry. Really. Then we have for Champion of Chaos. Not much explanation needed here. Just by far the best three drop in Stone Sky, and one of the cards that makes the aggro decks powerful and work as well as they do. Then we have Cind Cinder Yeti, just the second 3-drop really, a card to support the rest of the deck 
if the opponent plays his first blocker that might trade or even outclass the units you can just slam down a yeti get in for another attack and uh, deploy another unit and put the opponent that much closer to death and make that bandit queen that much more threatening the turn after um, also the warp is really nice giving the deck some more extra staying power because occasionally you will have this on top of your deck and just be able to warp it for value and then it's a free unit which is great um, making the deck a little less likely to run out of gas than otherwise i guess then we have for bandit queen just the um, the best thing really that an aggro deck can do on turn four is just so powerful generates so much pressure is great when she gets some Warcry buffs. Uh, the plus one, plus zero, and quick draw is particularly powerful on Champion of Chaos when the Deadly and the Overwhelm are both turned on. And yeah, just just a card that makes the opponent's uh, life a living hell and makes blocking that much um, that much more punishing than uh, it normally would. And then we have the new king. To the queen, vicious highwayman, a 4-2 warcry charge that deals a damage to an enemy uh, when it uh, comes into play, and if an enemy unit dies, um, vicious highwayman gets life steal and quick draw as well for the for the rest of the turn. Uh, so the thing is, usually um, this card is pretty high variance. A lot of the time it will come down and ping like a blocker to um, make the blocker worse at blocking without trading or deal one to the enemy player and then be a 4-2 warcry charge and that's something that's very easily traded with which is not that impressive and also double fire double shadow is more taxing on your influence you will sometimes have a situation where you can simply not play your highwayman it doesn't happen that often but it happens so it's definitely a relevant downside over say queen which is almost always playable because the deck is heavy enough fire that a double fire is not a big deal and one shadow is but the second shadow can sometimes be um, a bit unreliable anyway um, Wishes Highwayman um, has been pretty mediocre in my experience sure if you get to shoot down a one health unit when it comes down and it's a 4-2 uh, lifesteal quick draw it's incredible in aggro mirrors it's particularly good because there's usually a fair share of things to ping down and the lifesteal is super relevant in aggro mirrors in races but um, especially against mid-range units uh, mid-range decks the card has been pretty underwhelming it's mostly good in aggro mirrors or against very unit light control decks um, where there's not much blocking happening so yeah that's why there's only two also because i don't really want to run too many four drops I could see seven at best, but I'm not a big fan of the list that run like eight four drops simply because Highwayman is not that good. There's a fair share of scenarios and boards where Highwayman either just trades with a small unit in combat or can't even attack because it's being blocked by a bigger unit. Then you just play a four two that doesn't charge and deals one damage to the opponent's face. But yeah, sometimes. The unit is also just 5 damage to the opponent's face on an empty board, uh, threatening to deal another 4 next turn, and giving a war cry. So He has his uh, highs and lows, really. So 2 is what I settled with for now. And then we have the one Soulfire Drake, which used to be a third highwayman, but I think um, the curve is a bit better with 6 4 drops, and... 1 5 drop, or rather like 5 5 cost cards. Um, even though 5 is pushing the boundaries of the deck a bit with 28 power in total, but um, Soulfire Drake is just that much better as an attacker than Highwayman is across the board that I think 1 Drake um, adds more to the deck than the third Highwayman. Sometimes Drake is the right way to um, yeah, shift a game in your favor that is stagnating, for example. So I like the one Drake over the two uh, over the third highwayman. Also, the entomb of the random Drake can sometimes uh, make or break a game against control decks that are trying to stabilize. 
as spells, we just have the usual 4 Torch, 4 Rapid Shot, 4 Obliterate as major support cards, and then we have a bunch of removal, 2 Suffocate and 2 Annihilate. <coughs> the um, time deck seem to be at an all-time low. Um, Suffocate is particularly efficient in a fair share of aggro mirrors that you see these days, and uh, particularly go good and efficient at dealing with the new um, Pain of Aggro decks, Unseen Commando, and um, Whirling Duo. Annihilate can still deal with Unseen Commando, but at a less efficient rate, and it can't deal with Whirling Duo, so Suffocate uh, can help against the opposing life stealers there, and it's just a very tempo efficient card. And then we have the minimum of two Annihilates to deal with cards like Titan and Impending Doom and other fatties um, out of opposing decks. And yeah, then we have two Varus Favor as part of the power base, because I feel like um, the card is good enough to probably run some number off in this not so hyper aggressive deck over some actual power, because it still um, protects the one drops really well, and the deck only has eight actual turn two plays most of the time, so having two more um, is kind of nice to fill out the curve and add some additional value to the deck. And then we have the rest of the power base. Um, yes, that's right, zero waystones, because they don't really add enough to the deck in the end for what they cost you. I mean, maybe you could cut like a fire sigil for one uh, granite waystone, but then what is that really doing for you? Like, get a 1-1 one, one Granadin in a deck that's not even hyper-aggressive and doesn't make much use out of the Granadin. So i probably rather have the Fire Sigil that makes sure my seeds are ready power to curve out and play my 1-drops and stuff like that. Um, so also do you have to keep in mind playing Waystones in your secondary color, like Amethyst Waystone, doesn't even do that much because you're not that likely to hit 3 shadow and then have the waystone, so 4 shadow in total out of a power base that's not even built to hit 3 shadow uh, reliably or even 2. Um, so why would you want to play like waystones then? And Because what they're going to do most of the time is just make your seeds worse and not trigger very often. In the primary color it's a bit better, but they still have a cost and as you can see the deck already still has one sigil less than the old lists with four seed, and anyone that played the 30 sig 13 sigil uh, four seed power bases enough knows that they are still often enough uh, depleted power sources in the most inconvenient moments, be it in your opening hand for your one drop, or later in your curve to to play a threat, and then you have to play your depleted seed and not. Uh, play anything because you, uh, you're missing that one power. And the Waystone uh, advantages are just not worth that. Like What you're losing on your seed being depleted over a Waystone just costs you that much more. At least with the primary color, if you replace a Fire Sigil with, an, with a Granite Waystone, it's not really going to hurt your turn 1 percentage. Because if you have that Waystone and a seed, that Waystone is going to be a Fire Waystone, so you can play the Fire Waystone turn 1 to play a 1-drop, but on turn 2 you will still have the problem of having a depleted seed, um, having to play that seed and then not being able to play your 2-drop, while if that was a Sigil you could just play the seed turn 1 for your 1-drop and the Sigil on turn 2 to play your 2-drop. So even there it matters, but it matters less. While when you have an Amethyst Waystone and a seed, you cannot even play your 1-drop. You basically have to play your depleted seed and then play your waystone on turn two, and then play your one drop on turn two, which is really bad. Um, while in the other scenario, you at least have the chance to draw a sigil off the top or another uh, ready power source to play your two drop or make your seed ready on turn two. Um, so that's a more long explanation on why you should not um, get greedy on waystones and overvalue waystones. It's just a lot of the time more value to have your power operate smoothly and play your cards on time rather than get like a symmetrical nightfall trigger or a random 1-1 one -one that, that you even have to play and not is not put into play for free either so yeah just not 
just not worth it. Also, even for a fire is is going to take a while and only happen so often. And the other thing to keep in mind is the more waystones you put in a deck, the worse they become. Because if you have four waystones in a deck like this, um, the frequency of uh, one of those waystones being one of your like first three fire sources becomes really high. So plenty of times you will just play a waystone without triggering it, and only your second or third waystone will actually trigger, because the first one will just be a regular fire source. And the second, maybe, also depending on your draw, but the second one at least is reasonably likely to trigger. So there's a lot of diminishing returns. So once you uh, end up playing your waystones, your first waystone as regular fire influence, more often than not, all you're going to do is cripple your seats. That's not worth it. So um, the other thing here is three crest of chaos. Um, it is possible that it should only be two, because once again, not playing your cards on curve is a really, really big cost in an aggressive deck. And Scout is much less valuable in an aggressive deck that is trying to end the game as fast as possible anyway. It's much more valuable in decks that try to prolong the game, like slower mid-range decks, or mid-range decks that just don't do much early on, or control decks that actually just play a long game and then these uh, Scout triggers from Crests add up a lot and provide a lot of consistency and art selection for a deck like that. But an aggro deck is more harmed by not being able to curve out than by not scouting with that extra power. But yeah, I currently uh, am trying 3 Crest, 3 Seal. Um, crest helps Champion a bit, Crest helps Highwayman a bit, and makes th helps the deck a bit better um, hitting those um, 4 and 5 power for your top end, which is nice. And at the same time, when you have all the power, it helps you a bit to not to not flood out unnecessarily, or even um, bottom some of the more situational cards, like a Suffocate and the wrong, wrong spot and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, the Diplomatic steals, steals are still great and still really important. It's still arguably the best uh, Color fixer the best dual land in aggressive decks simply because of um, these decks playing one drops. So this is allows us to bring our um, fire our turn one fire sources to 16 um, without just playing an over abundance of fire sigils and crippling our shadow uh, consistency. Because if these would be fire sigils, we would also have 16 turn one uh, fire sources but we would only have 14 actual shadow sources plus 2 various favor, which would be pretty bad. And even if you would replace these with like 2 shadow sigils, it wouldn't be that great. I mean, what you could consider is cutting these two for like a crest and a shadow sigil, and then maybe cut a diplomatic seal for another fire sigil to still be at like um, 16 fire turn 1 and reduce the amount of seals, but seal doesn't really have much of a downside in this deck. Sometimes it can be a bit awkward for champion, the third fire for drake, or um, highwayman, but even that doesn't happen very often because it's only the seals that you draw later on off the top, not the ones you have in your opening hand. But yeah, um, I think the power base is pretty well balanced this way. If you really want to give up on favors, um, I could see doing that and then just adding a shadow and a crest and turning one of the seals into fire sigil. But um, I think the favors add more than another crest would do, for example. But yeah, um, that's it for the deck and the power base. I hope that uh, extensive insight into power base construction with the new set and crests especially for aggro decks, helped some people out there because I see a lot of lists that play way too many crests and waystones in these decks crippling their their deck more than they help it. And I can only recommend not doing that because it's just not worth it. All right, that's it for the deck list. As usual, we're going to hop into some games, show it in action, uh, show you how to pilot it and see how it's doing. 
Um, stay tuned for the first game coming up next.